so much for joining me for today's lecture today we are going to look into the conditions and how to prepare a pre-NDS or a pre-new drug submission application uh, uh, in order to send it to Health Canada why we need to have a um, pre-NDS meeting that's because when we are looking into the uh, drug development process and then uh, we are going to go over the in vitro studies in vivo studies in animals and then we continue with the clinical trials so testing the drug for its efficacy and safety and of course quality in uh, um, again human subjects at some point <clears throat> a company is going to decide to say that uh, we are now having enough evidence for the quality safety and efficacy profile of the new drug that we would like to put on the canadian market so what we do is that we are going to go to the uh, guidance documents uh, in uh, the uh, website uh, from government of canada and we are going to search for the uh, management of drug submissions and applications because this is where we have to go and see the guidance document which is prepared by Health Canada. Now when we look into the guidance documents in addition to all of the uh, uh, information related to the uh, drug submission we also have a section uh, related to the uh, meetings and how we are going to apply for having a meeting with Health Canada scientific reviewers before the company is going to prepare all of the documentations necessary in order to apply to market a new drug what we call how we call that application a new drug submission so when we are talking about a pre-NDS package or meeting package we are talking about a pre new drug submission meeting application where a company has the right to ask for scientific reviewers in Health Canada to give them a time usually two hours of meeting where the company is going to go over all of the findings related to the new drug that they would like to put on the market so uh, when we are going to browse this document we are going to be able to go to section seven this is what uh, again i'm showing you now so the same document we will go to section seven and here we are talking about the meeting packages okay so uh, these are all information related to the pre-submission or pre-application meetings so i'm going to read a few uh, lines of this guidance and of course uh, uh, followed followed by uh, those readings i'm going to show you uh, for the sake of application because lectures need also to be applicable i'm going to show you a cover letter and an example of a presentation that a company may send to health canada through the pre-submission or pre-application meetings in order to meet with scientific reviewers and to ask questions related to uh, any i would say uh, question that Health Canada reviewers may have before we prepare the new drug submission and submit that in CTD format to Health Canada. So pre-submissions or pre-application meetings may be requested by the sponsor, these are the pharmaceutical companies, prior to filing a submission or an application. That's because we can have pre-CTA or pre-NDS meetings. Pre-CTA is pre-clinical trial application meetings where we would like to start phase one studies and we would like to again meet with health canada in order to see if we can proceed with the preparation of the cta application and then to send it to health canada and of course I, we also talked about the new drug submission we can have a pre-nds um, again application in order to meet with Health Canada before we submit our new drug submission now what are those uh, drug submissions or applications we can give examples of new drug submission supplementary new drug submission abbreviated new drug submission uh, supplementary abbreviated new drug submission and application for the DIN now we can also apply uh, for clinical trial applications or CTAs we can also ask for a meeting 
uh, again, for the combination product classification. For example, if you are having a medical device uh, and uh, a drug, or if this is a medical a drug, uh, again, combined with a drug, we are going to ask Health Canada if uh, uh, we are on the right track and if, uh, again, uh, we can now uh, s submit our application in order to be reviewed by Health Canada reviewers. We can also have a meeting in order to go over requesting for a priority review. This means that we are now having an orphan drug, that we don't have any uh, a similar drug on the market, or if this is for a specific population, a low number of population uh, uh, that can benefit from our new drug. So we are going to ask for a priority review where instead of having, I would say, to wait for about a year <clears throat> for our new drug submission to be reviewed and to get a result from Health Canada, but the priority review may go down to six months. And of course, we can also use uh, the pre-submission or pre-application meetings, um, again, uh, for, as a request for advanced considerations of a submission under the Notice of Compliance, or NOCC. Because when we are, um, uh, again, having our application for uh, marketing a drug approved, we will use or we will receive a letter from Health Canada called Notice of Compliance or NOC. Now, if uh, a drug is really, I mean, it's very important and uh, there's no other similar drugs in the market and we would like to uh, let the population benefit from a drug. However, there are still some conditions that have, uh, that have to be met Health Canada will give us a notice of compliance slash C for with conditions. So the notice of compliance with conditions means that we can launch the drug to the market. However, we have to, uh, again, um, uh, perform more studies. Maybe we have to give, uh, again, an, an additional information about the quality or the safety profile or efficacy profile of the drug to Health Canada so that we are going to get our final notice of compliance without conditions. So here, looking into notice of compliance. We can also have, uh, again, a meeting, since this is an extraordinary use or use of the new drugs. We call that EUNDS. So extraordinary use new drug uh, submission. We can also have a submission or application relying to a third party data or a response to a notice of deficiency or NOD or a notice of non-compliance or NON. What are those notices when we are going to uh, apply to market our drug uh, in the Canadian market? As you know, we have to prepare a new drug submission and we have to submit that to Health Canada for review. At the end of the uh, review uh, procedure, we will see that we may have a notice of compliance or NOC. We may have a notice of compliance uh, with condition NOC slash C. We may have a notice of deficiency uh, related to, uh, uh, again, uh, the, the, the efficacy, quality, or the safety profile of a drug. And here we are going to receive a, a letter from Health Canada, which is called, again, an NOD. And if, of course, we are not in compliance with the regulations, and, uh, again, we cannot market our drug on the Canadian market, we will receive a notice of non-compliance, or NON, from Health Canada. Now let's go over the uh, purpose of the pre-submission application meetings for Health Canada. Here we need, of course, if when applicable, uh, we need to familiarize uh, Health Canada reviews uh, with the submission application prior to its filing and provide a forum to discuss the data in the submission or application for the purpose of facilitating uh, its review. It's also to identify potential problems or issues and manage disputes early in the submission and application process. Uh, also to identify studies the sponsor is relying on as adequate and well controlled in establishing the safety and efficacy of the drug, as well as uh, providing an opportunity for the sponsor to discuss details of the submission application with Health Canada provide an opportunity to discuss the potential eligibility of the submission for priority reviews 
and increase the quality of information submitted to Health Canada and provide the appropriate directorate uh, the opportunity to realign uh, resources to accommodate the arrival of the submission or the uh, application. So here we understand that uh, this is an opportunity for each sponsor to uh, talk with Health Canada, to deal with Health Canada. And uh, this is why uh, we need to prepare those packages. Now, what are in those packages? Okay, we talk about the pre-CTA or here, we talk about pre-NDS meeting requests. And of course, what I'm telling you here can be also related to uh, pre-CTA meetings. It can also be, um, again, uh, uh, related to the pre-supplementary uh, uh, sub drug application um, uh, sorry, new drug submission meeting as well. So we already went over the list of all of those types of meetings. Now, uh, talking about the meeting request, they should be submitted in the form of a separate document. So not included in the cover letter and include the following information. So the, we have to write down the purpose of the meeting, uh, talking about the specific details regarding the product to be discussed, we have to talk about, uh, again, giving adequate information regarding the product to enable Health Canada to assess the utility of the meeting. We have to have a list of preliminary questions to be addressed during the meeting. This is uh, one or two slides that we have to prepare in the uh, meeting uh, presentation file. Uh, it's also submission application information, so we can have the control number, product name, etc. cetera. Uh, three possible meetings date, are always required by Health Canada. So uh, we always propose three uh, possible meeting dates so that uh, we'll be able to meet with Health Canada. Nowadays, all of these meetings are online. And then a uh, suggestion regarding the review expertise necessary to discuss the proposed issues. And if the drug submission will rely solely on third party data. So I'm going to now, um, again, go over one document that I already prepared for you, which is regarding the um, pre-NDS meeting for Health Canada. So here I'm talking about, uh, uh, of course, this is a uh, training document, okay? But this is a training document which is very similar, uh, not identical, to what we have to prepare in a a meeting, uh, I would say, uh, presentation with Health Canada. So this is a pre-NDS meeting, but don't forget that it's very similar again to pre-CTA uh, meeting. Of course, we have to uh, we have a few sections that are different. Here we are talking about the new drugs pre-new drug submission meeting specifically. So um, here um, we are going to again have uh, the. Uh, briefing of the meeting, so we write down when uh, we, are, we have these meetings. Uh, the sponsor, of course, here is, uh, again, uh, we say who is the sponsor. We also write down what's the type of meeting, so the meeting here is a pre-NDS meeting. We talk about the drug, so we write down that's for which drug. Then we write about the indication to be reviewed, because this is the topic of the meeting. We also have to add the sponsor contact. Then we have to talk, I mean, write the product name, the active pharmaceutical ingredients, the dosage forms, the strength, and then the class of the medication and the therapeutic classification and uses. Then we have to go over the recommended dose in adult patients based on the clinical trials that have been performed. So we continue with, uh, again, uh, this topic and we go over the dosage form and the route of administration. They are all again coming from, uh, of course, preclinical studies, but mainly clinical trials, phase one. And um, again, you may, for example, have not just one dosage form and not just one route of administration. Then we have to talk about the contraindications, warning and precautions. So here, this is, these are the information that are coming from uh, safety uh, observations of the clinical trials. Uh, 
So for example, for this drug, we have to talk about the hypersensitivity that we observe in clinical trials. Uh, we also have, uh, again, for this specific drug, uh, risks for the pancreatitis or thyroid C-cell tumors or acute gallbladder disease or hypoglycemia, etc. So it's very interesting to see that we are really having a comprehensive review of the efficacy and safety and quality profiles of our drug that we would like to apply to be approved by Health Canada. This is why we need to spend time and of course working on the content of these PowerPoint presentations. Then uh, we will need to go over the review of the clinical trials. This is where we are going to write a few paragraphs, each paragraph corresponding to one clinical trial. If you are having um, uh, 25 clinical trials, yes, you may need to look into um, those, I would say, paragraphs and to write for all of the clinical trials. And don't forget that, again, we are here to discussing with scientific reviewers from Health Canada. So they are all having again the same backgrounds as us as regulatory affairs professionals and this is really a scientific review and discussion at this level for clinical trials so usually uh, we have several speakers in uh, again, a pre-nds meeting we have uh, speakers usually we have a vp of regulatory affairs who is going to talk or present a drug then for the clinical trials, we are going to have uh, the M M VP or uh, again, the director of uh, clinical research or medical affairs or uh, any other department dealing with uh, clinical trials because we need to have specialists talking about these, um, I would say, um, uh, contents. Okay, so it's not always... Uh, uh, again, one person. Usually we don't have only one person. Then uh, we continue uh, by talking about the preliminary questions uh, from the applicant. So here we are going to talk about, for example, again, as I already discussed, uh, from the guidance document from Government of Canada, we can look into uh, what if, if whatever we have done so far um, was okay and it was sufficient in order to support our claim that our new drug has the necessary um, uh, quality and safety profile so that and of course efficacy profile to be able for us to submit that to the Canadian market now some examples of um, the questions that we can ask in the uh, pre-NDS meeting from Health Canada scientific reviews are the following so what is the recommended format and content for the nds submission are there any specific requirements or guidelines for the for the clinical trial data to be included in the submission obviously as a regulatory affairs professional we need to know already in advance about the requirements in the guidelines but still we can always ask, ask this type of questions just to make sure that we didn't miss any guidance or regulation. Then another question could be, are there any specific contraindications or warning that should be highlighted in the submission? You see, it's always related here to safety profile. Then another question could be, what are the requirements of Health Canada for demonstrating the safety and efficacy of the drug by the sponsor next question could be are there any specific labeling requirements or considerations that should be addressed in the submission so as you see we are asking questions about specificities about uh, requirements that may we may not we may have missed we cannot miss of course because uh, as a regular affairs professional our the job is to read the regulations and laws and then to follow the guide, uh, guidelines and then to, of course, uh, uh, stay in compliance with the regulations. However, we can always ask uh, specific questions. That's why you uh, always have in the majority of these questions specific contraindications, specific uh, considerations, etc. Another question could be, can you provide, so we ask Health Canada if they can provide guidance on the expected timeline for the review process and potential approval. So usually it's one year. However, if Health Canada has some questions, 
I mean, the, I must say during that time, uh, related to any type of unclear uh, profiles, that, uh, I would say about the safety, quality, or the efficacy of the drug, they are definitely going to ask uh, the company to provide them with more information. This is why it's a good question. Still, uh, we, may, we may just give you generalities. It means that, yes, it may take up to one year, and uh, of course, it will depend on all of the observations during the uh, approval or review and approval of the uh, new drug submission. And another question could be, are there any specific post-marketing requirements or commitments that should be considered? Of course, these questions are, <clears throat> again, uh, just sim uh, simple ones, and these are examples of questions. So what is important is when we are in a pharmaceutical company, we are going to have a team with uh, sales, marketing, um, again, scientific information, pharmacovigilance, regulatory affairs, clinical research, labeling, uh, uh, again, and uh, of course, some medical writers that we will have. And you're now going to look into the content of this um, presentation, and then at the end, we are going to look into, okay, now based on our regulatory strategy, what are the questions that we can ask from Health Canada? So uh, this is why usually these questions, we write them down after having prepared the, um, uh, I would say, other uh, slides, because this is really, these questions are related directly to the regulatory strategy. Then we have um, now a uh, different, here we are talking about pharmacovigilance and safety. We may have a new speaker talking about the pharmacovigilance who had the expertise in pharmacovigilance. And then uh, we are going to now again present uh, a review expertise. So we talk about the adverse events. So what we are going to do in order to collect and to manage, report, and of course prevent adverse events or especially adverse drug reactions during the clinical trials. We also talk about the potential risks associated with the drug that we would like to put on the market. We will have, uh, uh, again, we'll have to talk about procedures in place in order for the company to identify safety signals. And then uh, we're going to also have other procedures related to the labeling and how we are going to revise the labels. Uh, in fact, when we talk about the labels or product monographs, we're talking about the fact that the company has to have procedures in place in order to update the product monograph and the labels. Why? That's because during the time that we are, of course, uh, studying or testing a product, and during the time that the product is on the market, we will always receive uh, pharmacovigilance and, uh, again, drug safety or safety um, uh, reports about the drug. So we continue to collect all of the pharmacovigilance um, uh, data, but we cannot just keep it in the sponsor's side or in the company. We will need to stay transparent, talk about the risks and benefits of our drug, even when we are on the market. And this is why the product monograph in Canada, like a product label in the US, or the summary of product characteristics in the EMA, or any other, I would say, label of a drug in other countries, they are not going to be only in version one. They are going to be dynamic documents where we are going to update them gradually. Each time that we have a new animal research, a new clinical trial, a new test, a new, um, I would say, observation, a new um, a periodic safety update report related to the use of the drug uh, on the market, we are going to update the product label. And of course, each time we will have to submit a new um, I would say the updated, um, um, I would say, new drug submission. And of course, here we can of course talk about the supplementary new drug submission as well. Then we also have, um, again, to talk about the post-marketing surveillance. So these are pharmacovigilance experts who are going to consider the long-term safety and effectiveness of the drug in real-world setting through the post-marketing surveillance studies. So these are phase four studies. We are on the market and we are going to um, assess 
the uh, safety profile of our drug in different populations. Obviously, we need to have also a protocol. We have to follow the ethics uh, rules. We have, of course, to have the approval of an uh, institutional review board or an ethics committee because we are still testing our drug, even if it is approved for a specific indication in the market on humans. And we need, of course, to go through the protocols again, through the um, uh, ethics, um, also ethical um, um, requirements in order to be able to conduct phase four trials in order to assess or to continue to assess the safety profile of our drug. And we have to do this as long as our product is on the market. So we uh, tell this, give this information to Health Canada scientific reviewers as well in this review expertise slide during the pre-NDS meeting. Now, uh, we also now going to have maybe another person who is in charge of the quality and manufacturing. In this case, the person is going to talk about the quality assurance and manufacturing evidence of the drug that involves, uh, again, uh, ensuring the highest standards of quality throughout the drug's manufacturing process. So the person is going to talk about the fact that the company has, um, again, quality control measures. They also follow the good manufacturing practice. Uh, they also follow the uh, requirements for the documentation of all of those different manufacturing uh, processes. And uh, obviously, they also talk about the fact that we do have qualified people. So now if we are dealing with, uh, um, again, uh, with inspections, we have to uh, say that our um, um, personnel are also trained on ICHQ-10. If this is about the risk management, uh, uh, product risk management, we have to, of course, talk about the fact that our personnel is also, is or, or they are going to uh, be trained on um, Again, ICHQ-9 for the, for the product risk, uh, risk management. And uh, of course, uh, our, um, uh, for example, people in clinical research um, department, they are all trained on the ICHGCP. And obviously, for uh, people or personnel involved in the quality and manufacturing, they are trained. Um, so through the certifications, of course, that they get for learning, trained on the uh, good manufacturing practice and quality assurance as well. Now we continue by giving evidences, so manufacturing evidence, uh, and we talk about uh, giving detailed data, information and reports, and uh, again we talk about which sponsor is going to submit those reports, and uh, we talk about the fact that in the new drug submission, we are also going to include the following. So this is for module three of the CTD or common technical document, which is the backbone that we use in order to prepare and to submit our new drug submissions. So the manufacturing evidence includes the characterization and specifications. So we talk about the fact that uh, we, as a company, we are going to um, present, uh, of course, to give to Health Canada through the new drug submission application, uh, some not some, all of the characterization and specifications. We talk about the stability, about the physical chemical properties, um, the acceptable limits, uh, and again, uh, for the drug substance quality attributes. Then we add another paragraph talking about the formulation and manufacturing process. So we say that the manufacturing evidence outlines the formulation of our drug uh, and the specific steps involved in the production of the drug. Then we talk about the control methods. And we um, um, state that our company describes the analytical methods and tests used to evaluate the quality attributes of the drug for which we are going to prepare the new drugs, um, submit the new drug submission. So we, we continue, of course, with uh, the review expertise. As you see, we had uh, people from clinical trials field. We have people from the manufacturing field. We have, uh, again, uh, a presenter for the pharmacovigilance and drug safety field. Now, continuing with the review expertise, uh, we're going to have someone 
talking about the biostatistics. And here we are again stating that the safety and efficacy of our drug are demonstrated through clinical trials that utilize statistical methods to analyze the data. And we say, again, we state that these methods help evaluate the drug's effectiveness in treating a disease condition and its safety profile. Then the statistician, the person who can talk about the statistics, um, is going to talk about the analysis that we are going to use or analysis. So here we can now have a paragraph about the efficacy analysis. And we are going to write a statement talking about patients, the total number of patients who have been, again, tested by the drug in order to look into the safety and efficacy, and of course, the quality of the drug. And um, this is how we, um, again, chose our population sample and the population sample size, because we are talking about statistics. So these are the analyses in order to test the efficacy outcomes that typically involve comparing the results of the treatment group with a control group. Uh, it can be a placebo or an active comparator. Um, now, we also can continue with the review expertise in biostatistics and uh, uh, stating the following, again, I would say, uh, states, uh, statements to Health Canada reviewers, uh, such as safety analysis. So we state that the safety of our drug is evaluated through clinical trials that include a large number of patients. Now we give examples, or we can also give the total number of patients, and we are going to look into uh, types of safety analysis that we used. So the methods in order to use uh, I would say, sorry, to look into the safety profile of the drug during clinical trials. Then we are going to have maybe the same person, maybe another expert talking about the um, medical writing. So here the sponsor has to, again, uh, state and to uh, confirm that, uh, for example, in that company, medical writers follow specific guidelines and templates provided by regulatory authorities. So we show that we are in compliance with Health Canada um, um, requirements to ensure consistency and compliance with regulatory requirements. In another paragraph, we can talk about the role of medical writers that involve reviewing the content of the submission documents, including the quality assurance and manufacturing evidence. In another paragraph, we can talk about medical writers uh, also who also collaborate with subject matter experts, showing that uh, we are working as a team in a company. They are not just separated entities or uh, departments. And uh, at the end, we can talk about the fact that by compiling and reviewing the submission documents, medical writers contribute to the overall quality and accuracy of the drug submission for our drug. So as you see, in the meeting, we are having several people talking, experts, I would say, in their field. And we also give statements to Health Canada because we are here to talk about our submission, our new drug submission. We are in a pre-NDS or pre-new drug submission meeting with Health Canada scientific reviewers in order to explain what we have done, explaining or talking uh, and give clarifications about uh, the drug itself. And then what are the procedures behind the scene? Because it's not just testing uh, uh, an entity or an active pharmaceutical ingredient. It's also having the procedures in place. We call that the quality management system. And uh, within each quality management system, we have procedures in place. We have qualified people in place. And we have qualified people trained on using procedures. So it's normal that we have a few slides in order to give to Health Canada the insurance that we as a sponsor or as a pharmaceutical company we are aware of the regulations, we are in full compliance with the regulations, and here are several experts in the company who are attesting, who are stating the fact that we are 
uh, working toward staying in compliance with regulations and we have qualified people and procedures in place. Then another review expertise is about the regulatory operations. So now that I understand the philosophy behind the, again, why we are giving these statements in those slides, again, a person, maybe a VP of Reg Affairs or someone else, another expert, is going to talk about the following. So they talk about the regulatory operations. So here we are going to, again, give a few paragraphs of statements. One of them is professionals in regulatory operations in our company play a role, a crucial role in ensuring that the submission format of our drug complies with Health Canada's requirements. In another paragraph, we are going to state and ensure, of course, Health Canada that their, our, their primary focus of regulatory uh, affairs staff is to ensure that the submission format is in line with the specific requirements outlined by Health Canada for drug submissions. So we talk about adhering to appropriate templates, to the formats, to the forms, to the guidance documents. And then we talk about the case of this drug and what we have done. So we continue to be in compliance with regulations, going over again the templates given by Health Canada, um, uh, again uh, following with the, uh, uh, I would say, the uh, advices from Health Canada and of course that's why or talking about the fact that that's why we are in this meeting and we would like to get more information making sure that we are doing our job well and then don't forget again we are going to end up having a slide with our uh, questions and uh, those questions are going to be the basis for um, a few interesting discussions with Health Canada scientific reviewers. So now uh, we are going to have another slide which is related to the Canadian Risk Management Plan and overview. So as you see, uh, when we talk about the Risk Management Plan, we are, related, we are talking about the requirements from, um, of course, pharmacovigilance planning, which is ICH E2E, as well as ICH Q9, which is for the product quality management. So uh, here we are going to uh, again talk about the comprehensive overview that will cover key aspects of the pre this meeting and we are going to provide clear understanding of our drug, its indications, safety considerations and sponsors inquiries regarding the regulatory process. In another slide we are going to continue with what we gave as an introduction in the previous slide. So we are going to say that the Canadian Risk Management Plan for our drug aims to provide a comprehensive understanding of the, of the drug, its indications, safety considerations, and address the sponsor's inquiries reg uh, regarding regulatory processes. Then we will continue with the review of the product. So we are going to talk about our product, which is a brand name for which, again, a, a generic name, uh, which is what's the type of drug and what it does. And again, we talk about its route of administration. Then we will continue by talking about the indications of our product. And then if it is uh, recommended for which type of patients, and for which uh, uh, disease condition. Then we are going to talk about uh, the risk management plan for our drug and we talk about the fact that the safety profile or the safety of our drug has been evaluated through extensive clinical trials, uh, post-marketing surveillance and ongoing pharmacovigilance activities in even other countries. Okay, Don't forget that a product that is not yet uh, approved in Canada may have been on the market in other countries. So we have lots of valid and interesting reports and uh, studies that have been done or made for reports uh, in other countries as well. So we can still have our pre this meeting for a new drug submission uh, for a new drug in Canada while we have information related to the same drug <clears throat> that has been already marketed for a few years in other countries because this is the same active pharmaceutical ingredient, 
So we can obviously use uh, uh, the data from other countries as well, even other populations. And we, of course, explain those data as well. Then uh, we are going to talk, we continue to talk about the uh, regulatory inquiries. So we state that inquiries regarding regulatory process are addressed by ensuring compliance with Health Canada's requirements for drug approval, post-market surveillance, and pharmacovigilance. And we assure again, ensure that the sponsor maintains open lines of communication with Health Canada and promptly provide any requested information and updates related to the safety and efficacy of our drug. So in this meeting, the sponsor is through this uh, paragraph uh, stating, or I would say committing to stay in compliance. Of course, we have to be in compliance because we want to keep our drug on the market based on the laws and regulations. Still, this is again something normal that happens in any pre-NDS meeting. Uh, so we always show that we are following the, the rules and the guidance documents. And we do have um, uh, trained personnel uh, trained just by education and, of course, by relevant experience trained because they have been dealing with clinical trials, with, uh, again, related to safety and efficacy of the product. They are also, we also have uh, trained people who know about, um, again, the, uh, I would say, ensuring related uh, to the quality of the drug. So this is part of the meeting as well. And we, of course, go back to those uh, statements, and then we come back to, uh, again, uh, different, I mean, giving different types of information. So then we are going to uh, continue with the conclusion of the Canadian Risk Management Plan, and then uh, we also give references. Now, <clears throat> you may have your questions at the end, so after references or before references. You can also have your questions at the beginning, but then at the end of this uh, presentation that you will give to Health Canada scientific reviewers, you will need to uh, go back to the slide where you have your questions because then it allows us to start uh, having very interesting discussions with Health Canada reviewers. And don't forget again that those questions are written or made based on the regulatory strategy of the company. Now, Another document that I wanted to show you uh, was uh, the uh, um, pre-NDS meeting request letter. Okay, this is the one that maybe I should have showed you, shown you before the presentation, but uh, since we continued again with the discussions of the, uh, for the efficacy and safety and the content of the presentation, I started with the presentation content first. So now what you are going to write in your um, uh, pre-new drug submission request for your drug. Uh, here, of course, this is just one way of writing to whomever it make uh, again, um, again concerned. But before this, I would like to let you know that uh, if you come back to the guidance document here, which is again coming from the guidance document, the management of drug submissions and applications. In section seven, we are going to look into the guidance documents for the meetings with uh, uh, Health Canada. So here, I'm going to look into section 712 for the meeting package. In the meeting package, we are asked uh, to submit a pre-submission application meeting package in one of the acceptable five file formats. It's usually, you can see it in section 8.1 of the same document, but it's usually PDF as well. It's not just the only format, but we use PDF usually. Uh, and then uh, we need to add this information in the pre-submission or application meeting package. A cover letter, that's the one that we are going to see. A proposed meeting agenda. Then a brief slide presentation. We already went over the slide presentation. It was about 23 slides. A brief summary of the drug product. So this is what we can add into the cover letter, but we also add that add into the slides. Identification of the indication for which approval is sought. 
proposed strengths and dosages, a summary of clinical development plan for the drug, a summary of the development of the drug, including any changes in production process, dosage form, testing methods, etc. When applicable, brief summaries of the safety and efficacy data relating to the drug, an overview of the market history of the product, and a list of specific issues or questions, and of course, the projected submission application filing date. So we already covered almost everything in the presentation that I showed you. Now the cover letter that we need to write is this document. So here we start talking about, of course, giving a paragraph of introduction. Then we are going to propose meetings so pre and this meeting conversation for proposed market approval for which drug and then we are going to write down the name of attendees from the company so here it can be a vp of regulatory affairs vp of medical affairs scientific affairs or clinical research you're going to have a vp for the manufacturing for example or maybe a person from quality assurance so we are going to write down the names of people who will be in the meeting, their job titles and their departments. <clears throat> then we continue based on the, uh, the guidance document that we saw, giving information related to our drug. So we give the information on the product name, the dosage, then a full drug name, what are the active ingredients, uh, and then the dosage form and strength of the active ingredients. Then we continue with talking about by talking about the therapeutic indication. Then we switch to the company or applicant information. So we give details on the company, our headquarters, our address, our website, and the contact information. And then we give the proposed meeting dates. Again, I continue to uh, go over what should be in a cover letter. So this is a proposed meeting dates, and we are going to write those uh, meetings. And again, we will now let Health Canada reviewers or say the, uh, to re to see if they are available. Sometimes they may say, "Look, uh, not maybe in the afternoon we can meet with you." So these are just se several emails or communication that we exchange with Health Canada scientific reviewers. This is normal, and then we will now continue by talking about the detail regarding the product to be discussed. We would like to discuss these because we as a sponsor, we would like to have the opinion of scientific reviewers in Health Canada. As I mentioned already, those scientific reviewers having, are having the same uh, background that we have, academic background and of course scientific background. So we are talking with our colleagues in Health Canada. And of course, the job description is based on making sure to safeguard the well-being of the population through the review and, again, approval of uh, new drug submissions. So it's normal that we have this type of discussions. And it's not a competition here. This is a collaboration with Health Canada. We are collaborating with the government because government and us, is, we are the same. Okay, now the government has set different rules for the uh, standards, for the regulations, because we have to have standards when we are, again, running a country. And then we need to have different companies following the same standards for making sure that we are producing the best, uh, highest efficacy, with highest efficacy and highest safety profile of products. Here, since we are talking about Health Canada and the drugs, we talk about the well-being of people, of the Canadian population. And uh, for this, our colleagues in Health Canada are reviewing um, our claims, our applications. So we are going to discuss with them easily, simply, directly, and honestly. And then we are now going to tell them, okay, what, what about the population? 
do you think that we chose the right sample uh, and the sample size uh, we talk about a risk summary about the product uh, we talk about the clinical considerations and we can talk about the data the data that we want to share with health canada so when we talk about the risk summary again don't forget that we always look into the benefit risk ratio of a drug no drug is safe at 100 percent but we need to know about the adverse drug reactions so that when a patient is going to use a drug, he or she knows about the relevant and associated risks uh, with using that drug. So it's normal that we talk about the benefits of the drug and its risks associated with its use. And in this case, we allow Canadians to make an informed decision before using our product so we have always discussions about the risk summaries it's always we have it we always have questions about the clinical considerations because don't forget that statistics is not a pure science and the results coming from statistical analysis uh, will depend also on the sample that we choose and the sample size that we choose. So did we choose the right sample of the population? Did we choose the right or enough number of a sample size representing the total number of the population having a specific disease? This is why we have to go over discussions. And through the discussions, we are now dealing with other scientists in Health Canada. So we have our scientists in regulatory affairs in the, in the company and we have other scientists in health canada so we talk scientists to scientists and we are going to have discussions and at the end of the day again we may have we always have drugs that have a high uh, uh, i would say a, a number of um, value of risk sorry benefit risk ratio so benefit is we have more benefit than risks but we need to know about the risks as well now, talking about the regulatory strategy is to ensure successful submission of the drug, our drug, for market approval in Canada. And we say that we have developed some regulatory strategies and listed them as follows. So the examples of regulatory strategies that you can use is to have comparative analysis of regulatory requirements. It may be a data bridging and gap analysis. It can be adaptation for the Canadian market from another market that this product has been already marketed. And then a regulatory communication plan. We can talk about the risk management and, uh, and a plan for post-market surveillance plan strategy. So we talk with Health Canada, we say that we, we, after going on the market, we still have a, we will have a risk management plan and we are going to have to conduct several studies, phase four studies in order to monitor the safety profile of our drug. Now, for how many years, uh, what are going to be the consequences, how we are going to use the results, it will depend again to what extent we would like to talk about our activities or our plans in, the, uh, in this pre-NDS meeting. Now, we also need to add a list of preliminary questions. So the examples here is, can we discuss the available data on the use of a drug? What specific risk management strategies are being proposed to address any potential concerns related to pregnancy given the limit data on, etc., the use of a drug? Or could we discuss the absence of data in the presence of uh, Again, human or animal milk and the potential effects on breastfeeding infants. Now, we also can talk about necessary review expertise to discuss the proposed issues. So here I gave you, of course, the presentation template. So um, again, I would say I showed you. So please refer to the presentation. And of course, we have to add several references as well. OK, we always use references. Don't forget that. We have the Copyright Act of Canada, and this is the law that we also write references and the source of our information. Now, in which format? It will depend on companies, it will depend on institutions. So usually for me, when I do again my, my submissions, I use the um, APA format. Perfect. So now that we covered the, um, uh, again, the 
pre-NDS meeting request letter and the content. And of course, we also looked into, uh, again, the uh, pre-NDS meeting um, PowerPoint presentation. Uh, I think that we can only just talk about the post-meeting requirements. So here, for information on pre-CTA consultation meeting records, we have to refer to another section after the pre-submission application meeting, sponsors are to draft and submit meeting minutes to Health Canada not later than two weeks following the meeting. And don't forget that this type of information is for documenting that those meetings have happened. And uh, in the uh, common technical document or CTD backbone, where we use it for preparing a new drug submission for Health Canada, we also have in module one, one sub-module that has to contain all of the information and correspondences related to the pre-CTA meetings and to pre-NDS or new drug submission meetings. So when filing the submissions or application, sponsors should reference the following information in the cover letter. The control number of the pre-submission or pre-application meeting that is always given to you after the approval of the, um, the date of the meeting by Health Canada, as well as a confirmation that the, 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 the submission application reflects uh, what was committed to at the meeting and the meeting minutes and any other pre-submission application correspondence with Health Canada. Again, don't forget that we need to add all of these documents into one sub-module in uh, CTD module one when we are going to uh, submit our new drug, sub, uh, new drug submission in CTD format to Health Canada. So uh, that was again the presentation related to the pre-new drug submission application. And we, uh, again, just to repeat, uh, to remind you that we were using the guidance document, the management of drug submissions and applications from the Government of Canada website. And we went to section seven and we looked into that those very specific information. So I would like to thank you so much again for um, again, your attendance, for joining me for today's class, uh, I will say a lecture. I hope that you enjoyed learning more about the pre-submission and pre-application meetings that we prepare for Health Canada. Thank you so much.